question about what Rishi Sunak was saying there about an 8% pay rise on average. Do you recognise that number? Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, Tom. No, we think that um, Rishi Sunak is calculating the figures in a slightly different way there. Um, and and we would ask him to go back and check his maths. Um, what is really important, though, is that 97, nearly 98% of our members, and he tries to separate out the NEU from the teaching profession. So we can't do that. Those people that voted in that online ballot to reject that offer uh, are working teachers of the National Education Union, and they simply say that it isn't good enough. And what you were saying there, teaching absolutely is and should be the best profession in the world. It can be wonderful. But at the moment, the pressures of funding, the inspection framework that we have, and the rising class sizes and lack of investment means that too many of our teachers are leaving the profession early and not enough graduates are joining it. Is it your understanding that the position of the government now is to say, well, that was your offer, you're not getting a grand bonus anyway, and we go back to the Independent Pay Review Board's recommendation? Is that your understanding of where we are now? Well, we don't know. I mean, we have said to Gillian Keegan this morning, let's talk about it. Let's get back around the negotiating table. We're due to find out what the head teacher unions um, think about the offer in the next couple of days as well. We want to negotiate with her. But if the SDRB is, uh, is independent, is truly independent, as the government has been claiming it to be, then we will sit down with them and we urge them to read all of the evidence that has been given to them about the working lives of teachers. Now, we've had the leaked DSE own report into the working lives of teachers and leaders that absolutely backs up the research that the NEU has been doing about workload and, and poor pay and the reasons why teachers are leaving the profession. In the, in the DSE's own information, it talks about part-time teachers working over 35 hours a week. Well, that's a part-time teacher being paid to do a full-time job. And that can't continue if it wants children to get the best education possible. Can I ask you about some of the other changes that would have come if had this deal gone through, particularly around uh, workload? The government's saying a significant cut to workload is being made. I, again, I read that that was a, about five hours a week. Was that your understanding? And do you want that to go further? If so, how? Lots of questions. Apologies. Well, no, that's fine. What we know is that teachers and school leaders work more unpaid overtime than any other profession. So the DSE was proposing... Um, uh, working towards, not a, an immediate cut, but working towards a reduction of five hours uh, a week less uh, for teachers and, and something similar for leaders. It wanted to set up a, a task force, a working party, to look at that. And we're happy to do that. There are other things that could be done immediately. But teachers have, have looked at that offer. Uh, they've read it. They've taken it in in detail. We've given them all of the information. And then they've looked at the offer in Wales and the offer in Scotland, and they've said, why are we worth less? Why are the children in our classes in England sitting in larger class sizes than the rest of Europe? Why are they not worth the investment from the government that talks about high standards of education? There's no way, is there, this is going to end with the Pay Review Board recommending an amount that might be as, um, th as it was for September 23, i.e. 3%, and your union members being happy with that, given they've just rejected a 4.5% offer. Well, well, we don't know what the independent review body will recommend for September uh, 23, uh, the year 23, 24. Mm -hmm. This dispute was about uh, the last year's offer, so the dispute will continue. Um, you know, it, the, the government doesn't seem to understand how industrial relations work or how negotiations work. When you've got a workforce that is hemorrhaging professions, uh, professionals, um, that you absolutely need to... Uh, to build your economy, to make sure that people have the skills that they need to go on to the next stages of their education. You can't ignore them. You can't ignore what is actually happening in our schools and our colleges. And we've heard from head teachers and school leaders today saying that they've looked at their school budgets. They based that on the 3% pay increase, the support staff pay increase, and looking at their increased charges for food and for um, extra services and for uh, uh, fuel and electricity and they are coming up 
with deficit budgets. We cannot have our school system collapsing because there isn't enough money to pay the bills. The extra two billion was welcome, but all it did was give uh, head teachers the security of being able to keep the lights on and to be able to feed the children that were coming into their schools. It, it, if, if this uh, any pay offer is unfunded, it means that further cuts to education will have to happen. And that hits the children who are living in the deprived areas, uh, the most deprived areas already. Uh, it hits them most. It hits children with special educational needs most. And so we want to sit well, what down... What also with hits them is not being in school, school isn't it? I mean, you can't, we can't ignore the fact that for another two days, children in, in, in most schools, in, at least half of schools in England, will not have education. That and that's too. why, yeah, and that's why the government really should listen to the profession because they're not taking this strike action or proposing this strike action lightly. Um, and and they know, you know, we have said, we should say, like, missed it out of his statement, but we have said that there would absolutely be local arrangements to ensure that children in year eleven and year mm -hmm. thirteen were not disrupted by this action. Do you think those but strikes could be called off? But if there is further negotiation and, and a realistic offer that our members are prepared to, to accept, then absolutely. But what we have to look at is that, that those year groups, those children doing their SATs this year, those children doing their GCSEs and those children doing post-16 qualifications, they have been hit by 10 years of lack of investment in education. They are in the largest class sizes we have ever seen. They are more likely to be taught at GCSE by a teacher who is not qualified in the subject that they are teaching. So we're calling on Rishi Sunak and Gillian Keegan to get back around the table, to listen to the evidence from the profession, listen to people who are in classrooms every day and talk about what we can do to ensure that there is adequate funding for our children and for their education. Good to talk to you. Neve Sweeney,